Hi, SimPilot Andrew here. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see flight sim hardware and software product reviews, or you just want to enjoy flying to anywhere, start now by subscribing and clicking on the bell icon below. Let's go flying. Welcome to the video for today. We're going to be doing a bit of a quick introduction into the Simionic PFD and MFD. Okay, so we'll just do a brief introduction to the hardware of the Simionic setup. So we have the iPad that's inserted into the bezel, and the bezel is modeled after the G1000 Garmin devices you can find in most GA aircraft these days, new ones anyway. The basic layout is the same as what you can see in a regular G1000. You have navigation and heading button on the left hand side, all of your autopilot settings of buttons, and then at the bottom you have the altitude knob. On the right hand side you have your comm tuning for your radios, you have uh, a course and your barometric pressure for altitude. Your range adjuster, so you can adjust the range on the, the screen. And then there's the autopilot functions in terms of your flight plan on the right hand side with the FMS uh, knob that allows you to tune in to the various uh, elements within the flight management system itself. Around the display you have various different functions across the bottom which these buttons with the up arrows on are used for selecting the various pieces of function there. So if we start in the top left hand corner you have your navigation radios. You have two of them, a nav1 and a nav2, which you can use this knob here. These are, there's an inner and an outer knob the inner knob, you'll notice, changes the hundreds, and then the outer knob changes the decimal values. So if you're tuning your nav radio to a certain frequency, you tune in the frequency, and then what you do is you press this transfer button, as you do in the normal aircraft, which will transfer what you're tuning to the active frequency. So you'll see it switched over to 108.4. You can also do that with Nav2 by actually pushing the button and it will switch the, the um, focus from the Nav1 to Nav2 where you can again change what the Nav2 radio is looking at with the inner and the outer knob. And again to switch over to the active for that, actually push the transfer button again so it's very similar to the way that the uh, COM radios work as well for COM1 and COM2. So let's take a look at the bottom uh, row of uh, functions within the Garmin 1000. So the first one is inset. So what that allows you to do is actually inset a small version of the map that shows on the MFD, which we'll be going over later. So if I hit inset, it actually puts a copy of the map, the plan view, top-down view of the aircraft on where it is. And you'll see some information in here. Uh, it'll show the moment we're just south of the Springbank Airport in Calgary. It'll show you the, sort of the nearest uh, airports you can see that's showing up on the map. You can show traffic. You can show the mountain uh, topology and terrain. You can also have um, various different weather functions on there as well. Hitting the back button takes you back to the main menu. The next feature is the PFD which really changes what you can see in the compass rows at the bottom. So you, at the moment I have synthetic vision turned on so you can see the ground is actually moving uh, in front of us and this is really useful when you're in mountainous terrain because it changes color depending on how close you are to uh, a given uh, elevation. You can reset the defaults. You can have the wind displayed in different ways. I actually have the wind showing here. 
showing me whether I have a tailwind or a crosswind in this little box here, so you can adjust that on this screen. DME allows you to change what shows up on the screen in terms of uh, the DME information that may be set, so it shows up as a little box there. You could also have the opportunity to show a couple of different uh, bearings, depending on which way your nav radios and GPSs are set up. You can actually show different um, bearings to those items, to those locations that you're tuned into on the compass rose itself. There's a couple of different HSI formats. There's the, the full HSI, as you can see here, but there's also a way that you can do an ARC HSI as well, which changes the view uh, to from 360 to just in front of you back on all of these menu take you back to um, the uh, the main screens also there's a way here to change the units for altitude actually set to 292992 for standard um, barometric uh, pressure so that was the PFT screen on CDI CDI allows you to change what's the HSI is paying attention to. So in this case, you can switch it between the GPS track, VOR1, which is what your nav ra one radio is tuned into, and VOR2, which is your what your nav two radio is tuned into. So toggling it allows you to change what shows up on the HSI. DME here. DME is really not modeled uh, in the uh, uh, garment system, uh, but it does allow you and through a different menuing system to change a DME that you're uh, trying to tune into from a NDB perspective. Transponder allows you to change this tra transponder uh, within the system. You can have it on standby, you can have it turned on, altitude mode, ground mode, VFR will automatically change it to 1200 as the code and then you the code button itself allows you to put in the new code number so depending on what air traffic control gives you for a transponder you can put that code in here so as an example you know I just typed in 1321 and it's changed it you can see right here on the uh, transponder ident is the exact same function as it is in a regular aircraft it will ident your transponder to the controller. Time and reference is an interesting one. It allows you to um, start a timer if you wanted to do, if you're doing a procedure turn or wanted to um, time yourself. Uh, you can also put in your reference speeds in terms of glide, VR, VR, uh, VX, VY, and that will actually show up on the ticker tape on the left hand side here, which is quite useful. And then the last one on here is what are your nearest airports? So it gives you some initial uh, bearing information to the closest airports, which is useful too in case you have a diversion you need to execute on. So let's talk a little bit about the PFD display itself. It's a pretty standard display. You have your airspeed on the left hand side with a speed tape on the left hand side. You have your horizontal situation display in front of you, uh, which shows um, the, whether you're straight and level. It also shows if you're turning as it does in the normal aircraft uh, with the normal steam gauge. And on the right hand side, you have your altitude. It also shows you uh, next to your altitude what your vertical speed is. At the moment we're flying at 5500 at level flight, so we're at zero. If you have a positive rate of climb, it will show the ticker tape ab above zero. If you have a negative um, rate of descent, it will show below um, zero. There's your standard barometric pressure and also what your autopilot is tuned into in terms of your altitude. You have your HSI, which is your compass rose and it shows you your your heading and all of the various different features and functions depending on what your nav radios are tuned into and you adjust with the PFD or the CDI or the DME buttons on the bottom.
moving on to the MFD, you'll notice that the outside buttons are exactly the same as the other displays, so you have redundancy built into the system. So the autopilot uh, functions on the left, the navigation and the heading features work exactly the same as the way they do uh, on the PFD, as well as the altitude uh, knob on the bottom. On the right hand side you have the same comm channels, course and barrow, plus range buttons, and the FMS items for controlling your flight plan. What's different you'll notice in the middle of the screen is we have engine instrumentation on the left hand side and then we at the moment we have a navigation map and it shows the aircraft where we are right now in the center and we're south of the Springbank Airport. The map itself has um, various different features on it. At the moment we have the map itself set to show the topology so you can see the mountains off to the right hand side of us as we head south. Um, and then you can also turn on various different features here on the map, terrain, the high and low airways uh, if you're instrument flying, plus other weather information you can turn on. Profiles interesting uh, will also show you a profile of your altitude um, from the side view and show you the terrain based on the altitude you're at. So we're flying at 5,500 and at the moment if we keep flying 75 nautical miles we're going to hit some, uh, if we don't turn we're going to hit some higher mountains. But that gives you an idea as to what will show up there. You can also adjust the range, so twisting it to the left, you'll zoom in to where your location, and twisting it to the right, we'll zoom out, and you'll see, if we zoom all the way out, you'll see where we are in Canada, north of the U.S. border. declutter the map, so decluttering it allows you to reduce the amount of information that shows up on the screen, so you, you can there's different levels of that, and you can declutter it so that there's very little information that appears, or quite a lot, so that's the main item. The other menu that's on here as well is the checklist functionality, which we'll get to in a minute. The engine instrumentation on the left hand side this will actually change depending on which plane you're flying, whether it's a 172, a 182, or a beach a twin, which is very useful. And there's also a feature been added in here which will change this instrumentation for other aircraft as well. So you could actually set it up to fly a jet twin engine turbine if you wanted to. So I'm just going to show you quickly how the uh, flight management computer works with an example here. We're actually going to go direct to this airport you can see here is CYQL, Charlie Yankee Quebec Lima. This is the way that you set it up in the, if you were going to do it direct to that particular airport. So you hit the direct button and the flashing cursor comes up. Then what we're going to do is put in the target uh, airport. So we said C, Charlie, Yankee, Quebec, Lima, that's Lethbridge brings up a little bit of airport information here, gives you the bearing, the distance, and also the course. And what we're going to do is press enter to activate and activate. And you see what it does, it takes your current position and then we'll draw a magenta line on the map to actually take you through to the airport that you put in the flight management computer. So I'm just going to adjust our heading now. 
that we don't fly into the mountains. And push our altitude up to 7500. So just quickly on the menus. So this is the main map menu on the MFD. There's also a number of different pages that you can turn to. You do that by using the inner knob on the FMS. And that, well, as you can see here, changes to the waypoint page. So it goes from map to waypoint, which is where you can see a bunch more menu options. And then you also have an auxiliary page, a flight plan page, your checklists, and also some information around what's the nearest set of airports uh, to your current present location. So if you just quickly head back, so on the map page you have the navigation map, which is what we were looking at. Just zoom out a little navigation page that we had, the traffic map is on standby right now, there's a storm uh, page, a weather page, and a terrain proximity page. Switching to the waypoint page, there's an airport information page, and intersection information, that's uh, for intersections associated with your instrument flying. NDB information for the nearest NDBs, VOR, and then also you can they have the opportunity you can put your own waypoints in there if you want to. The auxiliary page has a number of different pages on it. You can do trip planning. There's a utility page, the GPS status, the system setup page. This is interesting if you're flying in Europe and you need to be able to change the channel uh, comm spacing for how the comm radios work the XM information and overall system status. The flight plan page allows you to put in your flight plan if you're flying uh, detailed uh, waypoints other than a simple GPS direct. And you can activate stored flight plans in there as well. The checklist allows you to look at various different checklists, which is quite useful. And then the nearest page has nearest airports nearest intersections, NDBs, VORs, waypoints, frequencies, and also airspaces. So it's quite comprehensive and Simeonic has done a great job in emulating what the real Garmin 1000 does. So thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this please do think of subscribing and smashing that notification button and we'll see you next time.